Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe Yates and in this video we are going to be looking at this motor in the S15. We are going to be conducting a compression test of all four cylinders. I'm going to show you how. First of all, we need to start off with bringing the car up to normal operating temperature. That's really important because as the temperatures increase, so does the parts inside. So we need all the parts of the motor to be working in their normal range of heat. Okay, in terms of compression numbers, we are looking for anywhere between absolute minimum of 128 PSI all the way up to 156 PSI. So that comes from the Nissan owner's manual. If you've got a non-turbo though, your compression numbers should be higher than that. When I tested my motor, I'd barely driven it and the compression pressures at time of test, they were pretty much low and even at the minimum spec. So I was a little bit worried. Bear in mind, my motor actually has a metal head gasket. The thickness is just slightly different and also it's been skimmed. Although I would have expected it to slightly raise the compression. Who knows? All in all, I actually haven't tested it since I've ran it six drift events now. So I'm really keen to see where it's at. Moving forward, moving to higher horsepower, we need to make sure that those compression numbers are nice and even and they're not too low. A couple of notes on doing an engine compression test. You need to remove all spark plugs. And when you go to test, you need a good battery voltage, a good recharged battery. It's always a good idea to stick like a jump pack on it or stick a battery charger on it. Make sure that the motor is at normal operating temperature. And when you go to test it, make sure that the accelerator pedal is all the way flat. So you're getting a maximum amount of air coming through. Another important thing to do is remove the fuel pump fuse. You don't want the injectors to be squirting, spraying fuel while you're doing the compression test. Basically what happens is the fuel lines the bore. You can actually score your bores. With that aside, let's get straight stuck into it. So it's hard to hear me guys. It's because we've got the motor going. We need to get up to normal operating temperature. Just bringing it up to normal operating temperature. This is the air fuel ratio. That's what I've been running, just to squeeze a little bit more out of the injectors. Super importantly, we have to take out the fuel pump fuse, which is the top 15 amp one there. So pull that fuse, and then that'll just disable the fuel pump. Okay guys, I'm a goose because I just realized that my engine cylinder compression tester is back at the old place. Ah. So guys, we'll just pick it up when I've got the tester, which will be right now. And I'm back and we've got the compression tester gauges. In fact, I've actually got two. I want to run the test two times just to get an average reading across the board. Because I have noticed this gauge here, this one that I brought, brand new, tends to read a bit low for some reason. I don't actually think it's accurate. I haven't tested it against an actual proper pressure gauge, like an accurate pressure gauge to tell the difference. But considerably, it does read a bit lower. First of all, we need to start with removing the strut brace. Very important because you can't actually get to one of the coils with that strut brace in place. I've just got the strut brace, as you can see, I've just zip tied it to the bonnet so it's out of the way of the coil pack there. Remove the connectors to the coil packs. I've got R8 coil packs and I made the harness myself. Um, quite a common upgrade now, actually. Just gently lay them on the side over there, out of the way. Might have to unplug the connectors on the last two, three and four. The harness isn't going to stretch that far. A little bit of rusting around that outside. That just shows signs that a little bit of water's gotten in there. Not a good thing. Ideally, we don't want that. So far, like 
I've not had any misfires. Just something to be weary of because these R8 core packs don't have the sealing around the top. It's okay to use, but just be very careful when, if you're going to wash your motor down. And I have been guilty of it, just splashing a little bit of water in there. There are some aftermarket uh, kits you can buy with the, uh, I think, that have the seals and the plate across the top. Now time to remove the spark plugs. I'm just going to crack each one. <sighs> Little tip is to hold the head of the ratchet to stop it from flexing when you go to just crack it. That way you uh, minimize the risk of actually cracking the ceramic on the actual spark plug itself. Oh, that one was done up pretty tight. <laughs> As you can see, just a little bit of water's gotten around inside the spark plug hole. Not the greatest, that's not what you want. Thankfully, it hasn't affected, like it's, it's water's not gonna get down into the threads. Not when it's sealed by the washer. That's pretty good. The actual plug itself, it's not super sooty. It doesn't look like it's been running rich. It's not oil soaked as well, which is a really good sign. It's not black and oily and wet. That's a good sign when it's nice and dry. I like to undo them by hand, unless I'm in a hurry, I'm at work. <laughs> I haven't got my snap-on 3 8 electric little gun here. So yeah, what happens if you get water down, most of you guys will probably know this already, if you get a little bit of water down in the spark plug hole, it can cause the spark, like the coil in the spark plug to arc wall tube of the um yeah cylinder head most of you guys know will know that i'm sure quite clean and i've gapped that uh spark plug down my preference with stock coil packs although these aren't stock these are r8 if i was to run the stock coil packs i would, I would gap them down like this to 0.7 point, between 0.6 and 0.7 of a mil and i'm actually using a colder plug so what i'm using is just the copper version of it, the ngk plug and i've never had a problem with these you do have to change them sooner though because they just they are copper plugs the ones that i use have like a colder heat range these plugs are bcp r7es so the seven is a colder plug as opposed to the standard sort of spec 6 bcpr 6 es so i run a colder plug i just want to have a look down the spark plug holes as long as i don't fall off this chair i'm standing on <laughs> i'm gonna have to be careful i've had a look at the first two and the pistons look good on the top i can only see a little bit though oh i used to be used to this a lot more when i worked at land rover oh i can't, I can't really get in there looks all right looks good the piston tops are pretty clean Looks pretty clean to me. Now it's time to pull that fuel pump fuse. Now I'm going to conduct two tests like I previously described. One with the Repco gauge, Repco tester and one with the Optilux. And I'm just kind of going to get like an average I guess. I'm just going to start off with cylinder one and work my way through to cylinder four. Screw it in by hand all the way. You'll soon know when you get to the end or whether you've even started the thread or not. Ah, oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. When you get to the end, just give it a good one. Good twist. Should be enough. Now the motor's warmed up. I've got the spark plugs removed. Fuel pump fuse removed. So it's not going to spray fuel when we crank it. I've got the battery charger connected up and the gauge for the first cylinder connected. All right, let's go. With my left hand, I'm going to crank it. And with my right, I'm going to open the throttle 100% all the way. Just want to crank for about five to seven seconds until basically that needle stops moving. <laughs> Sorry guys, a little bit of fail there. Don't forget to disconnect the core packs, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to get sparks. Silly me, what was I thinking? So bear in mind this gauge is inaccurate and reads way too low. Just release the pressure there. Cylinder number one. Now first reading is 120 psi bear in mind i think this gauge reads low so i'm going to go write that down cylinder number two the 
let's see, I'd say 122.5, pretty much the same as cylinder one, 122.5 I'd say, cylinder number three. Okay, 120, right on, bang on, 120 PSI. Cylinder number four. Oh, this is not good. Uh-oh, cylinder four is low on compression. We'll try that again, but it's not looking good. That's down on compression. 90 PSI, I'll, I'll run that again. That's not looking good, guys. Might have to take it out and uh, take the head off it again and actually pull the pistons this time. Replace the rings. Have a look, see what's going on. It's got some compression, but it's low. I think I may have discovered why it's low though. I'm hopeful. See the crud, the rust on the O-ring? Maybe it just wasn't sealing properly with the O-ring. I've just cleaned the spark plug hole out and um, I'm just putting a little bit of grease just on the O-ring to make sure that it's sealing 100%, well hopefully anyway. It's not wet down in there, it's dry, which is a good sign, somewhat of a good sign. It's possible one of the valves isn't seating properly. Alright, we'll give it another shot, hey? Another crack. No, we're still down. Still down on that cylinder. That's not good. Just above 90 PSI, 92.5. Now using this compression tester, we're going to see and compare this little reset button on it, just to release the pressure. Cylinder number one. I've never been a fan of that Repco gauge ever since I brought it. It's red low and I brought it brand new. But yeah, not looking good guys with the cylinder, cylinder number four. That's a big difference. I think I'm going to have to pull this motor. Okay, there we go guys, we have 135, cylinder number two. And there we have a 140, cylinder number three. Okay, again, we have one, that 140, I'd probably say Closer to 137.5. Cylinder number four with tester number two. Okay, guys, this is crazy. This is weird. That's why I've tested it with two gauges because the reading I've just got now on cylinder number four is higher. Let's just say that the difference in tester number one, which is the other gauge, the other compression tester, the difference is actually more. But with this, which is a more expensive, though older, much older gauge, the difference across all four is less. So I'm more believing this gauge, and I want to believe this gauge actually, uh, but we're looking at 135 Guys, 135, as opposed to 90, 90 from the other tester. But yeah, 132.5, that's a lot better than what it was with the first tester. All right, guys, let's go again. One hundred and thirty five PSI. So guys that really had me worried there. Just with that tester, the tester number one, the Repco compression tester, gosh. So I feel a lot better testing it with the other tester and the difference being less. So check out the difference. Using this gauge across the results, there was a 30 PSI difference. You can have a look at the results I've written down here. 120 for the cylinder one, 122.5, 120 PSI down to, yeah, a 30 PSI difference. Crazy. Cylinder number four, just reading really low. But then we come across to tester number two this one here using this gauge now this is a top brand like back in the back in its day i think i'm not sure if that's all around but it's a it's a higher quality one an older gauge but reading more on i'm tending to believe this i don't want to believe that there's a 30 psi difference and then this one this gauge this test only shows a 10 psi difference that's more realistic but that's crazy hey guys
It just really goes to show you that you have to have an accurate gauge when you're testing your cylinder compression. That's crazy, a 30 psi difference as opposed to a 10 psi difference. So you could really understand why this kind of thing would drive someone crazy. My gauge, the number one tester gauge, I've just tested it again, like third, fourth time now. Check this out. It's bounced back up to 120 and I've tested that twice now. So I think the gauge is just a little faulty. And that lines up with all the other numbers, cylinders one to three, and those figures at about 120 PSI. At this point in time, I'm not too tripped out over those numbers. It just seems like that gauge is playing up. But we're even, nice and even across one to four, cylinders one to four. So I'm happy with that moving forward. It's not the highest it could be. Ideally, you'd want about 150. From factory is like 156, but uh, yeah. It'll do. I'm not getting any engine oil blow-by at all. It's not smoking out the exhaust. I'm really happy with the current health of the motor. The compression test did throw me off a bit there for a second. It's like, oh no, I don't want to pull this motor out again. But uh, I think it's, it's good, even across the board. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Drop your comments down below if you thought it was interesting or have any questions and I'll happily try my best to answer them or someone else will. Thanks for your support and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out.